Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about reproductive cloning or whole organism cloning. Uh, we're going to talk about what it is, uh, then talk about Dolly the sheep, and then we're going to look at the process by which this occurs, which is somatic cell nuclear transfer, and then we'll talk briefly about some of the uses for cloning and for clones. Uh, so firstly, reproductive cloning is, as I said, also called whole organism cloning. Uh, is a process of producing genetically identical copies of an animal. Now it's important here that we're when we're talking about this, we're talking about uh, genetically identical, that is, have the exact same DNA. Uh, however, they're not necessarily going to look the same. Um, in particular, the ages of the cloned is going to be different to the age of the donor. I, for example, wouldn't be able to clone myself and send clone Mr. Catterson to work for me while I sit on the couch and play PlayStation. Um, if I clone myself now, I'd basically get a baby that looked like me when I was a baby. Uh, also, uh, so as well as age, life experiences um, and expression of the genes, uh, expression of those genes, so what we call epigenetics, uh, would be different because of different lifestyle factors of growing up in a different time. Um, so in the uh, television show Orphan Black, um, it, which is about clones, the same actress plays all of the different clones, so they look exactly the same. Um, and that's kind of what we think, that they... Uh, look the same and talk at the same time and have the same thoughts, but that's not how clones work at all. It's merely the same genetic code. Cloning is something that uh, we have had for a long period of time. Um, and there were some successful early cloning experiments, um, some as simple as uh, getting a blastocyst, so a, a fertilized egg that had started dividing but hadn't started differentiating yet, and giving it a shake and splitting it in two, um, causing twins um, to be born, or twination, I think they call it. Um, but the first uh, mammal that was cloned, mammals are harder than other animals, um, from a somatic cell, so rather than from a sex cell into another sex cell, uh, taking a body cell and uh, inserting it into a sex cell and cloning it, was Dolly the sheep, which was cloned in Scotland in 1996. Um, and the sheep was called Dolly after Dolly Parton because it was cloned from the mammary tissue of the donor sheep. The method by which uh, reproductive cloning was achieved in Dolly the sheep is called somatic cell nuclear transfer. And this is one of those uh, words in science that sounds like a big word, but it's just scientists aren't creative and it's just saying what they're doing. So they're taking, taking a somatic cell, so that's a body cell rather than a sex cell, um, and they're taking the nucleus of that cell and they're transferring it from one cell to another. And so it sounds complicated, but it's really just explaining the process. Uh, so in this case, they take the somatic cell, put the nucleus nucleus of that into a donor egg, uh, then put that egg into a surrogate. And um, we'll go through that in a little bit more detail. So in the case of Dolly, an egg cell was removed from a black-faced egg donor. Um, so we've got our black-faced sheep here. So from the ovary, a, a egg cell was removed. And then the nucleolus, this part here, was removed with a very, very fine glass pipette. So basically it went into through the cell membrane um, and sucked out the nucleus and nucleolus in a process called enucleation. Uh, at the same time, these somatic cells were removed from the nucleus donor, and this is a white-faced sheep that the uh, somatic cells were removed from. The scientists then took that single cell, that single somatic cell, and placed it next to the empty egg cell. So this had its, as we said, it had its uh, nucleus removed from it, so we, it's empty now. And so inside the outside layer of the egg, the zona pellicida, uh, and placed that cell just underneath but outside of the egg on the cell membrane. Then they used a small electric shock and that fused the membranes of that empty egg and the somatic cell together which resulted in the nucleus from that somatic cell now being inside the egg. So you now have an egg 
that has a full set of chromosomes inside the cell. And usually we'd refer to this as a zygote. Uh, that then starts dividing, um, that it, uh, cell starts dividing, um, eventually starts uh, differentiating, uh, forming a blastocyst. That blastocyst is then implanted into the uterus of a surrogate, and in this case they had a, another black face U as a surrogate, and this was carried through uh, as a normal pregnancy. So then after the usual gestation period, I think it's about four months for sheep, um, uh, the clone is born. Uh, so in this case, Dolly was born. Now it's important to note here that Dolly has a white face, the same as the nuclear donor, rather than the black face of both the egg donor and the surrogate. So n the genes of those two, uh, the egg donor and the surrogate, was not uh, passed on to Dolly because she is a clone of the somatic donor. Okay, let's have a look at some of the uses that we have for cloning. Uh, so cloning can be used in animal husbandry. Um, so if you've got a prize bull, for example, you would be able to, and that bull was getting a bit old, you'd be able to clone that pr prize bull, uh, and the semen from that prize bull would be the exact, uh, well, the semen from the clone, rather, would be exactly the same as the semen from that prize bull. Uh, something else that people are interested in is reviving extinct species. So this is actually taking uh, samples from specimens that we have in uh, storage in museums and stuff and uh, reviving an extinct species. Now one of the problems with this is finding the correct surrogate that you can put it in. Um, so what we need to do is find um, organisms which are pretty close uh, to the organism that's gone extinct. A good example uh, in Australia where this has occurred is through um, the gastric brooding frog, a uh, frog species that went extinct, oh, I'd like to say 10 years ago, something like that. It's in the fairly recent time, um, but they were able to uh, bring that uh, species back from extinction. Uh, we can use this for genetic modification. So if we uh, take that DNA out, modify that gene, and then place that gene into the surrogate. Um, so the same sort of process is used, only we can have an in-between step where we can modify the genes that are in that individual. Uh, another thing that we can do is we have these animal models of disease. So these are uh, animals, often rats, uh, that have been bred specifically to uh, display a particular disease. Uh, so this takes a whole heap of crossbreeding to get them to sp display this disease, but if we uh, were cloning these rats, uh, that would take that crossbreeding and it would make the process a bit uh, easier um, to use clones that are exactly the same so that we can model these different diseases. Another thing that we can use cloning for is the production of stem cells. So stem cells are undifferentiated cells uh, that can be used uh, to replace tissue before they turn into something else. In this video, we've talked about reproductive cloning, the process of cloning a whole organism, getting an exact genetic copy of that organism. We've talked about Dolly the sheep, the first time this has occurred from a somatic cell in a mammal. Uh, we then went through the process that used to clone Dolly the sheep, which has been used to process, clone a number of uh, animals since, uh, which is somatic cell nuclear transfer, where a somatic cell or a body cell is taken from a donor, placed into an empty egg that came from an egg donor. That uh, egg is then placed inside a surrogate, and the offspring or the clone is born with the exact DNA copy of the DNA donor. And we've talked about some of the uses for cloning in industry, medicine, and agriculture. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.